right? Okay, our friend Dave Ramsey was here and he was talking about food. And one of the most popular food movies to come out was uh, Julia and Julia. And I am a huge fan of Julia Child. She was one of my influences when I was just a little John Paul. This used to be on the, on the television. Uh, we'd watch it all the time with my family. And this was one of the most influential books for me growing up. So today I would like to prepare one of her recipes, which is one of my favorites. It's called uh, Coats de Pork de Charcuterie, which is basically um, pork chops that are pan fried with a uh, mustard and pickle sauce. I mean, what goes better? You know, call it Coats to Pork Charcuterie. We charge you 35 bucks. Um, but uh, pan fried pork chops with uh, pickles and mustard, that's a deal. We can get that in under 10 bucks, all right? So we're gonna show you how to do it. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna prepare my side dish, which is pomme puree, mashed potatoes. I've got some potatoes that are cooking over here, and we're gonna pour those into a food mill. Just gonna pour them in. And I quartered up the potatoes and cooked them till they were completely cooked. But they're not mushy, all right? I don't want them to get waterlogged. And then all we're gonna do is take these guys and run them through. Now this is really important because when I make mashed potatoes, most people actually take the mashed potatoes and they put them in a mixer. And this big blade goes by and it smears all the potatoes and then you add your cream and your butter and it really doesn't go into the potato. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to fluff up the potatoes by running them through this food mill on the bottom. I'll show you what that looks like. So part one was breaking these into cool little granules. Part two is gonna be drying them out. Now I can tell when they're dry. See all the steam coming off of here? That's wonderful. That is water that is taking the place of uh, the cream. I want to get the cream in there and the only way to do that is to get the water out because imagine this I have a sponge and the sponge is full of water and I try to pour cream into it not going anywhere All right So what I need to do is get the water out of the sponge so that the cream has a place to go So it's just not sitting on top and being greasy. So that's why we dry out our potatoes and I can tell they're dry When they stop giving up plumes of steam, so that'll take a little bit here I have a gorgeous chunk of pork. It's really a double chop. And I'm gonna cut this into two really nice portions. But on the bottom, I've still got a chunk of bone. Now, this is gonna be kinda of neat because a lot of the French uh, recipes out there, you need stock and you need all these sauces. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take the bone from this and make a small stock that we're gonna turn into the sauce. So when I cut this off, I'm gonna brown this bone off. I'm gonna turn it into a small pork stock and I'm gonna throw some vegetables in there, throw some mirepoix, and it will give me just enough to make sauce for this chop. Pretty neat? Here we go. So I'm just gonna follow the line of the bone. So there's my bone. I'm just gonna go in on top of it and just follow the bone all the way down, all the way down, all right? And then follow it under and then scoop it out. That's my bone. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to put it in a pan, and there's enough fat on here. If I was working with a really lean bone, I might add a little bit of oil to it. Um, but there's enough fat on here that it's going to brown up beautifully. So I'm going to take that chunk of bone, I'm going to throw it in a 400 degree oven, and let it roast until it's brown. When it gets nice and brown, we'll add some vegetables, we'll brown that, add some water, turn it into a beautiful stock. Now, I've got my beautiful, this is, this is just a gorgeous chunk of pork. It's center cut, it's out of the loin, really nice cut. And what I'm going to do is take this guy, and cut it into two perfect chops. Now here is a cool tip. When I'm making a chop, you see how it's kind of long looking, all right? Well, what I can do is shape it by just tying it with a little bit of twine. Now the twine that I'm using is food safe. Don't go to, uh, don't go to a hardware store and just get twine because that was never intended to be eaten. But this is food safe. You can buy these at culinary stores, okay? That's all I'm going to do. So I don't want to constrict it too much, but I just want to shape it. See the difference? Okay, so we've dried out our potatoes. Next thing we need to do is we need to heat up a little cream, and I'm going to reduce it by half. And the reason I'm doing that is because we worked really hard to get all that moisture out of the potatoes. I don't want to add water back into it, so I'm going to reduce the cream down by half, effectively making it about 60% fat, which is going to be great. And then I'm going to add some butter to that on top of it. Why not? A little salt and pepper, best mashed potatoes you've ever had. Okay, so while that's going, I'm going to prepare my tomato. Now, this is for our sauce. Now, because we're using um, 
this kind of a la minute sauce. We're going to throw it together and we're not making a big mother sauce that's going to take a couple days to make. I'm going to add a little bit of body to the sauce by making tomato concasse. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to choke up on my knife with my thumb, stick it in, and I'm going to pivot around my thumb and remove that. And then I'm just going to make a little X on the bottom. I'm going to drop that into boiling water. And then I'm going to plunge it in ice water because I don't want to cook it. I just want to peel it. So this guy looks pretty good. I want to leave it in the ice water just long enough to take the chill out of it. If I leave it in too long, it's going to get waterlogged. I don't want that. And I just peel the outside off. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the seeds. And the reason I want to get rid of the seeds is they can tend to be a little bit bitter when they're cooked. All right, so we're just going to take these guys and just kind of give them a squeeze. And then we're going to concasse this, which just means to roughly chop. So I'm going to take these guys like that. And this doesn't have to be too neat because at the end of the day, I'm going to strain all of this out of my sauce. Something that's really important that Julia always talks about is before you saute something, you need to dry it off. So there's moisture on the outside. And what I want to do is I want to get beautiful caramelization. Well, that's not going to happen with that little bit of moisture there. So I want to just take a clean paper towel, kind of blot it dry. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt, zoom, zoom, and a little bit of pepper. Now, when I put them in the pan, the other side's going to be up. So that's when I'm going to blot that one dry. Okay, so our pan's been heating up a little bit. I'm going to take some neutral oil, put it in here. Okay. Now, I can use clarified butter, but that's a whole other process. And since I'm really not... Uh, I'm going to get rid of the fat when I'm done. I'm not that concerned about it. The pork is going to flavor my pan. So I'm going to put him in. Put him in. Nice sizzle. And just to make sure it's not stuck, I'm going to take the heel of my hand and I'm going to hit the pan to jar it loose. So that's going to prevent my pork chop from sticking on the bottom of the pan. So I'm just going to let those brown gently. I have a cast iron enamel pan, and that's what I'm going to put my chops in after they heat up, or actually after they start to brown. Um, but what I want to do right now is I want to make sure that this is nice and hot. So I'm going to put this in my oven to knock the chill out of it. And while I'm in here, I'm going to take a look at our bones. The bones are starting to look pretty good. So put these guys over. I'm getting some nice browning going on here. Back in the oven. Okay, we're doing okay, but we want a little more color than that. So keep it on nice, gentle heat. A little more color, but it's getting gorgeous. Our cream's reduced down about halfway. I'm just going to take some butter and throw it on in there. Going to let that melt. We're going to fold that into our potatoes. Now, the nice thing about these mashed potatoes is I can hold them pretty because they're nice and dense. They're going to hold for a long time. All right, and because I boiled out a lot of the moisture, they're not going to separate and get granular. They're really going to be beautiful. I'm going to use a stiff spoon, not a whisk. I'm going to put in about half. And we're just going to mix. They're going to get super rich, super succulent. Okay, so these guys are in pretty good shape. So I'm going to throw them in the oven. And we're just going to finish cooking them in there until they reach about 140, 150 degrees internal. That guy looks pretty nice and brown now. So we're going to add some mirepoix to it. A little bit of celery and carrot are also going to go into the sauce, into the bones. So my onion's gotten a little bit brown. It's gotten a little translucent. I'm just going to take some of our concasse tomato, and that's just going to bolster up some of the body. So I'm going to take this, pop it back in the oven. Our pork chops are in there. They're doing beautifully. And I'm going to drop the temperature down a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to 325. And let everything in there gently cook. Next to go into the pan. I'm going to deglaze the bottom of the pan. All that beautiful brownness on the bottom, I want to get. So I'm going to add some white wine. And I'm going to reduce that down to what the French would call sec. So I'm going to take it down pretty dry. Now, the reason I'm doing that, when I put the wine in, I don't want it to have like a, like a raw wine flavor. Okay, It shouldn't taste boozy, but I want the wine because the wine's going to bring out a lot of sweetness. It's going to bring out a lot of subtlety. Okay, so we've gotten kind of dry here. And now I'm going to add a little bit of flour. So just a little bit on top. I'm taking advantage of some of that little bit of that little bit of fat that's still left in the pan. I'll let that cook for a second. I'm going to work the bottom 
making sure that I'm not burning. But this is really starting to look good. And just keep working the bottom of that pan. Now I have some stock that I made previously for my pork bones. Beautiful, deep, rich. We simmered it for about five hours. I'm gonna add that to our pan. This is gonna simmer for about 20 minutes. While it's happening, I'm gonna add something pretty neat. I'm gonna add some parsley stems. And the reason I like parsley stems is they don't have chlorophyll in them. So they're gonna give them a lot of flavor. See, I've got some bright flavors. I have some dark flavors in here. My onions are, are kind, of, kind of dark and rich. My, my stock is obviously pretty rich because I browned the bones off. I've got the tomato in there that's kind of bright, but I want the parsley in there. The parsley adds a little bit of bitterness, which is nice. It's gonna clean up all that flavor. I'm gonna add some thyme. All right, when I think about meat, I think about thyme. Um, chicken, roast, things like that. I have a bay leaf. Bay leaf is amazing. And then I'm gonna add some black peppercorns. Let's see how those guys are doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna add some water to this. I'm just gonna top it off. And just let it cook down. Now, as it continues to cook, it's gonna boil down. I'll top it off with more cold water. Make sure that it's cold and reduce it down. More cold water and reduce it down. And essentially, I'm just gonna keep extracting flavor from that. So this process here is probably gonna be about four to five hours to get all that out. So I try to make this up ahead of time and then I cook the pork chops the next day. And something that's important to notice, if you can see right here, there's a little dimple. So if you buy one of these guys, you have to make sure that it's in past the dimple, otherwise it won't read accurately. So if I only stick that much of the thermometer in there, I won't get an accurate reading. Oh, we're good. Perfect. So I'm gonna pull those out and let those rest for about five minutes. Now we're ready. All that amazing flavor that we had, we're gonna concentrate right there. So look at that. It's like liquid gold, just absolutely stunning stuff. And I'll take the back of my spoon, just press it, squeeze everything out that I can. So we're gonna pull these out, I'm gonna let them rest, but I want that stuff on the bottom. Check out the bottom of this pan. That is money. That's really good stuff right there. So I'm gonna pour off a little bit of the fat on top, because I've got some grease there. Okay, and I can tell, because when I touch it, it's kind of oily. So I'm gonna pour some of that off. And then the rest goes in. We're in the home stretch. I'm gonna add a little more of my, my cream mixture to that. Because I just want to get them really luxurious, really deluxe, really on the lens of the camera. <laughs> there we go, that's silky. I've just gotta add my garnishes to the sauce. And I'm just gonna chop some parsley, which is appropriate because there's parsley stems in the sauce, if you remember. And this is gonna give a nice pop and contrast at the end. When we talked about our sauce before, we talked about not adding any salt to it. And the reason was, because I was gonna add mustard, just a little bit of Dijon, and I'm gonna add some cornichons, but I'm gonna add the liquid. So this is just a little bit of liquid for my dish. And then I'm gonna julienne some of these guys up. So that's gonna be part of my garnish also. We're gonna add a couple of pieces of butter in, just to smooth out the sauce. So I'm gonna take it back to the stove and stir it just until it starts to come together. Okay, so here we go. I've got my gorgeous, fluffy, dare I say sexy, and I will, because they are sexy mashed potatoes. And then it's time for the sauce. And just a little bit of parsley to finish it off. I invite you to try this at home, and while you're doing it, you need to put a shout out to Julia. You gotta thank Julia. Saint Julia, I think so. Enjoy.